Hello and welcome to the Bulls on Parade Talk, providing Houston Texans coverage 365 days a year to all the sports fans out there. I'm your host, Joshua Sines. The Texans took a bit of a step back as they suffered their first loss of the season to the New York Giants, 30-17, the final score. At the same time, we've learned quite a bit about the team overall and how it is structured, especially offensively. This week, the team comes home to take on the Buffalo Bills, who are also coming off a loss against the San Diego Chargers. And despite that, the Bills present a very tough challenge for the Texans this week, especially on offense. And so with that being said, let's take a look at what are the signs to victory for each team, starting with, of course, the Houston Texans. The Texans struggled to establish a running game against the New York Giants. It's clear that the Texans missed a big key of their offense, Arian Foster. With his lingering hamstring issue, it is very possible that the Texans' game plan going into this game against the Buffalo Bills won't include him necessarily. If the Texans can find a way to get Alfred Blue and Jonathan Grimes going early and often, it can keep the Texans' defense off the field and Buffalo's defense on the field longer. And speaking of the defense that needs to be kept fresh, they need to do a better job of maintaining gap discipline against the run as well as making more effective tackles. That, along with an effective pass rush, starting with guys like J.J. Watt on the defensive line, should be enough to keep Buffalo from establishing a rhythm on offense. At the moment, C.J. Spiller has been their most effective weapon on offense as well as special teams. Hopefully Shane Leckler will be healthy enough to do what he does best as he remains to be one of the best punters in football today. As for the Buffalo Bills, and speaking of C.J. Spiller, getting him and Fred Jackson going early in the running game and the screen game would definitely be the way to go so as to get their offense started. The Texans continue to struggle stopping the run, so this should help keep the defense honest, give the quarterback enough time in the pocket to make the right reads, and give more opportunities for guys like Robert Woods and fourth overall pick Sammy Watkins down the field. On defense, they need to watch the Giants tape and see how they were able to slow down the Texans' running attack and force Ryan Fitzpatrick to make bad decisions resulting in several turnovers early. With 9.09 to play in the second quarter, the Buffalo Bills had a very good chance to hit Sammy Watkins, who was lined up as the X receiver in this play for a big play down the field. It was man-to-man -man coverage and they had called a pass play to beat man-to-man. -man. It was a deep cross route and a streak to get the safeties backing up, thus allowing the dig route underneath to come open. However, EJ Manuel slightly underthrew the pass and despite having good protection in the pocket. Therefore, execution is definitely the key and perhaps would have given the Bills more scoring opportunities. With 316 to play in the first half of their game, the Texans are down 7-0 and need to put up some points on the board to have at least some momentum going into halftime. The play was initially set up to have Tyson Claybo entering the game as an eligible receiver, so he's the Y tight end. So overall, we have four route runners in this formation. At the snap, Andre Johnson points to the sideline saying he's on the line of scrimmage. This means that DeAndre Hopkins on the other side should be lined up behind the line of scrimmage. Otherwise, he'd be covering up the Y tight end in the formation, which as previously mentioned, was Tyson Claybo. Therefore, to correct the formation, DeAndre would simply take a step behind the line of scrimmage and we'd have a big play which would have given the Texans a better scoring opportunity near the end of the half. My X Factor for the Houston Texans continues to be Whitney Merciless. Jadeveon Clowney is still recovering from arthroscopic surgery on his right knee, so the Texans need Merciless to step up in this game. For Buffalo, 
I decided to go with EJ Manuel. When I watch him on tape, I can definitely see the talent, but he's missing consistency at the quarterback position. In the Bills' last game against the San Diego Chargers, there were moments where he had receivers open but just couldn't throw the ball with enough accuracy to finish the play. Two former first-round picks that need to be more consistent in their play on the field. Which one makes a bigger impact on Sunday? We shall find out soon. Texans and the Bills had one thing in common in their Week 3 games. Both started slowly and ended up losing the game. The main sign I'll be looking out for will be who will establish a rhythm first. This includes establishing the running game, taking care of the football, and staying disciplined as it pertains to penalties. I'm having a tough time believing that the Texans will be able to do enough, especially on defense against the Buffalo Bills. Unless that run defense tightens up and is able to stop C.J. Spiller and Fred Jackson, it's going to end up being another long afternoon for the Texans. Therefore, assuming that the execution is positive for each side, I'm taking the Buffalo Bills in this game simply because of their two-headed dynamic running attack and the struggle the Texans have against the run. Now, if the Texans can establish their run game and keep Buffalo's defense on the field for extended periods, then I can definitely see the Texans getting their second home win of the season. Right now, though, I'm going off from what I saw last week. Although Houston made a bit of a comeback against the Giants, they continue to struggle stopping Rashad Jennings running right through the middle of their defense. Buffalo had some key drops overthrows and underthrows which perhaps would have made the game more competitive had those passes been thrown more accurately. So once again, this matchup will be all about execution and unless I see something different from the Texans, Buffalo will do just enough, I believe, to escape Houston with a win. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. One word that can accurately describe the challenge the Texans faced this Sunday against the Buffalo Bills is speed. From guys like C.J. Spiller and Fred Jackson to even their first-round pick Sammy Watkins and Robert Woods, the Texans have a tough task in front of them defending all those fast playmakers. Just like in the last game against the New York Giants, it will all boil down to execution. One week can definitely make the difference for any team. Do you agree? Tell me why or why not in the comments section below. If you enjoyed, I leave a like on the video before you go. I always appreciate that. Be sure to keep up with the talk by following me on Twitter at Bulls on Parade Talk. Like the Bulls on Parade Talk Facebook page. Subscribe to this YouTube channel if you haven't al already. And thank you, by the way, to those that have. As well as visiting my website, bullsonparadetalk.blogspot.com. Also, stay tuned for the latest live episodes coming up on my podcast lots of good discussions on there links for all that will be in the description below hope to see you on there if you're not already in the meantime this is your host joshua signs from houston home of the texans saying so long and see you next time right here on the bulls on parade talk